<laughs> hey gun people <laughs> i'm gonna do a crazy cop story and i brought the hay out here and the horses went to the wrong side so i gotta go get my camera which i left up here but uh for those that don't watch my horse channel i don't know if buddy's gonna have a little hissy fit sometimes he has a little uh <laughs> when i'm on the wrong where you know buddy boy so he'll get a little excited <laughs> So I'll clip this in to the start, then I'll go get my camera and uh, it's a good Texas morning here. So I'm gonna do a drink my coffee and do a couple crazy cop stories. But uh, let me see if the horses will uh, end up running around here like with a mission. Oh, <laughs> buddy stopped, Mr. T pushed him. <laughs> buddy! Quit playing around. Get your butt over here and eat. This is going to be a quick. Oh, here you go. What are you doing, boy? You better get over here. I'm going to go eat all your food. I'm going to go eat all your food. <laughs> I'm running with my camera. Facing backwards. <laughs> Trying to draw this horse into a run. <laughs> he don't want to run today. <laughs> Little shit making me look bad. You better get over here, boy. Come on, man. <laughs> and he has to run through the food <laughs> oh my goodness he was being a little he didn't want to run this morning then the old man walks out here like me just kind of like ah oh, shit another damn day let me go eat something <laughs> what's up old mr t i see old man all right i'll stop this here and then i'll uh, go get my camera i'll come back and do a crazy cop story i'm gonna get mr t <laughs> all right i'll be right back all right horse people i'm back shit what a pain in the butt i said i'd be away for a second i freaking walked back to the house forgot my damn coffee went and got the camera then i get out here start the damn camera and the battery's dead so i just ordered a new battery because i'm tired of these batteries freaking dying all the time and uh hopefully uh this battery will last later so let me get to where you can hear me and see the boys in the background some people would rather watch them than listen to me so what prompted this video was the angry cop donut the cop beating up the new <laughs> they're smoking the rabbit over there <laughs> uh, the, the the judge that protected his wife and so I'm reading the comments this morning and, you know, it just amazes me on how much you really get from comments. And I could be reading them wrong because I don't have the inflection of what they mean. But it, the people that are defending, still defending this angry cop guy as if he is a good guy and a great guy. Look, a lot of good people do bad things. Bad people do good things. I, I, you know, some people are like, I know you hate the bald guy. I don't hate the guy, I don't even know him. This is the first video I said, I didn't know he had a YouTube channel. I've never watched a video from the guy. And I got people here who are just really, appears to be strong in the comments like, I know you hate the guy and I guess your option is just to show up and let everybody yell and then just leave. And I'm like, that, that's such a, a, a kind of a, a bullshit straw man argument when people try to take a complex situation and then they make it seem like they're really smart. So out of all the dynamics of neighbors, alcohol, calling the cops, parking dispute, civil matter, non-violent, non-arrestable, not a big crime. Somebody said somebody choked somebody or two girls attacked one girl. I didn't see the whole video. I never see the whole video and I never have enough information. I base my information on what I have. So all you people that come here that saw all this other stuff and have these great things, well, dude, you're entitled to your opinion. I don't care. 
I mean, you ain't gonna convince me to change my mind because you say, yo, man, you really missed the whole thing and uh, you, you, you need to change your mind. That, that doesn't change my mind. Facts, circumstances, totality of circumstances, things that are reasonable change my mind. And then I had other people saying, I knew you wouldn't change your mind because you said you wouldn't before you even watched it, which means you have no credibility. I never said I wouldn't change my mind. I said I doubt if I'll change it. I change my mind many times when I have more information. But anyway, on that topic, which kind of got me to, wow, my little thing just kind of slanted there. Normally that's Smokey pushing on it, but I looked and Mokey's not around, so he didn't do it. Mokey's the kitty cat for the gun people. I think most people know him, but anyway. So here's the confusion and complexity that I thought of a couple of when I'm thinking about all this, because people are like, you know, when they start, look, there's people coming here saying, I hate Donut, and I hate Anger Cop, and there's people, I love Donut, and I love Anger Cop, and I like you, I mean, look, you can like different people, I, I mean, that's not the issue here. The issue that I like to try and get people to remember is government will grow, Government has the ultimate in power. Hell, they got the ability not only to kill you on a spot without a trial, cops have the ability to shoot you without a trial. Well, Rick, you're innocent until proven guilty. We have a constitution. They can't do that. Well, that's because you're a freaking idiot, because they do it every day. So government has enough power to take your life or to take the life of someone close to you without a trial. And when I tell you we need to restrain government and hold them to a high standard and make them accountable so they don't get more out of control than they already are, somehow I'm a cop hater, uh, I don't like angry cop, a bald guy slept with my wife. I mean, you just come up with all these outrageous explanations and I'm just like, dude, do you realize what an idiot you sound like? To me, anyway, there may be other people that agree with you and be like, man, that was really smart. Yeah, Rick, do Rick picks on a cop that's angry with a gun that's attacking an old guy, calling him an old geezer when he's drunk in his own home after they beat up his wife and humiliated him, screams in his face. And Rick doesn't like him because a bald guy slept with his wife. I mean, in what freaking bizarro land are you living, you freaking idiots? Anyway, so, Rick, you shouldn't call your viewers idiots. I I'm not talking to my viewers. I'm talking to idiots that come here and do a drive-by comment because they want to defend their normal biasy to what they represent. The people defending this cop, and this is this is a big problem. The camera slanted and this is kind of bugging me. I don't know if it's bugging anybody else, but it's not straight. <laughs> so maybe you're like, Rick, you're an angry cop. You're angry at the camera. No, see, I didn't have to, I didn't have to belittle the camera and get in his face and humiliate it. I just kind of fixed it. Okay, it's not, not a big deal. I'm not anti-camera, a camera didn't sleep with my wife and all that, whatever. So, uh, look, government needs to be held accountable. Uh, th this discussion provoked two things because people are accusing me that I wouldn't do anything and I would let people walk away and that would be my answer. That's not my answer, people. My answer is, the sun's reflecting here now. <laughs> Let me glow that just a little bit. <laughs> Look, if I had a professional camera crew and I had somebody to do this, I wouldn't have to do this. So don't be coming here crying. He kept messing with the camera. He wouldn't get on his story. He talks to. Shut up, you freaking crybabies. You hit play, you big dummy. Blaming me because you hit play? All right, so being a cop means you have a lot of power. And to quote, I think it was Spider-Man, with power comes responsibility. And not only does it come from personal responsibility, it comes from accountability from the people that you work for and report to, which should be the pesky citizens. But instead, it's the career corrupt, lifelong politicians that get elected playing a pesky citizen, and then they get up there in their ivory tower and they make laws for everybody but them. But I digress. This is about two crazy cop stories I'm gonna get to. So. How do you handle people who are unreasonable? Normally, you try to be more reasonable. Normally, you don't engage in useless, insultive, combative conversation or behavior. That's, that's kind of a 
a, a balance for you cops out there that can't figure this out and maybe they're not teaching anymore. That's how you deal with people who are unreasonable. If you deal unreasonable people with in your face threats, uh, threats of going to jail, threats of arresting you, threats of taking your life away, threats of towing your car, if that's your only way, if every problem looks like a nail and you're only a dumbass hammer, well then maybe that's the way you deal with shit. But, and I think in real world, cops ought to be held to a higher standard. So people are like, man, you, you wouldn't do that. You probably wouldn't do that. I'm sure you'd let somebody push you. And I was like, you know what? I did let somebody push me. Actually, there's three crazy cop stories. I already did one, but I'll bring that one up too. One situation I let somebody push me, the other situation I didn't. In the situation I let somebody push me, it was a father we were arresting her daughter. In the situations I didn't let somebody push me is some ego maniac SWAT guy who thought he was hot shit with his face covered and he got up in my face on a scene and I pushed his ass out of my face and I didn't let him get in my face. So those are the different, see, see to me this angry cap guy that wants to, to pick on an old guy that's drunk, how does anybody find honor in that? Actually, there might be three crazy cop stories. The drunk bar incident. Did I put that one down? Shit. <laughs> Throwing chairs down. Oh no, I didn't put the crazy drunk guy. So let me, this will be three crazy cop stories. Okay? So, when, how do you handle things? So, one incident I remember when I was talking about this was, we were out, I took my guys out, I ran a canine unit in the Air Force, and we were all cops. I took them out after a training day for drinks, and we were all partying at the bar down, downtown. And so we went off base, because we don't want to deal with the bullshit cops on base. So we go off base, and, and we're just drinking and cutting up, looking at women, having a good time. Uh, doing this, some guy gets, he's really drunk, and he's kind of being a little belligerent, but he's not messing with us, so we kind of ignore him. And then a couple of my guys, a couple of younger troops, because they know me, they know that I'm... I'm not gonna, I need to set an example a little bit because I'm the freaking ranking guy here and I'm the one that's bringing them out to drink so I don't obviously don't want to set a bad example and get in a fight but they also know that if somebody gets in my face I'm gonna probably jump and we're gonna be on. So we're in here and this guy's doing something I can't remember how I ended up getting involved. He either bumped into one of my guys, I, I think it was Swanson was his name. He had a great dog, I think his name was Nero. Good dude. Wore an earring. I kind of didn't like that, but he he wasn't gay or anything. He liked women. <laughs> he dyed his hair blonde on top. He was kind of one of those punker kids, but he was a good dog handler. He cared about his dog. He did a good job. He wasn't out there just being a jerk with a, a guy with a gun and a badge. I liked him, even though he was a little on the uh, in a military way on the fringe of being, you know, not a conformist. I still liked him, and I and, you know I'd get shit from other people like, yo. Gore, man, that guy works for you. Why do you let him dye his hair like that? I go, man, if he wants to dye his hair, I don't give a shit. He's got his beret on, can't see it anymore. Yeah, but if he takes it off, you can see it. He's not representing the military. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I just didn't sweat the small shit. I was always in trouble because I let my mustache grow too long. It was out of wreck. My hair was too long. It was out of wreck. So I wasn't the conformist type anyway. But anyway, so I think he bumped into Swanee. And Swanee was kind of, he, he was, uh, I mean, he worked out. And he was kind of, he'd get down to business, and I knew he would fight. And I could tell he was getting irritated, and he was like, I was like, dude, just ignore it. Let's just, let's just continue our good time and, and fucking ignore this drunk being a dick. Well, at one point, he comes over, and he either bumps or says, you guys are pussies or you guys are cops. He knew we were cops or something. I know you. You're a fucking dog handler or something. And I, I don't even remember. It could be something else, but I think it was something to that effect. And I was like, okay, I had enough. <laughs> So, and he was drunk, and I mean, he was drunk to where he's kind of like this, but he's in your face, and he wants to, and it, I mean, beating this guy up to me would be like being a pussy. I mean, what's the point of beating up a guy that can't fight back? Kind of like big, angry cop, macho, bald head, tough, working out, tough guy, tattoos, and uh, he's going to pick on a guy, probably in his 70s, after he beats up his wife, and then he puts him in handcuffs and starts yelling at his face. I, to me, that's just pushiest, man. I'm sorry. So, this guy, I finally say enough, and I, I go, I go, dude, you're freaking drunk. You're starting shit. I've had about enough of you. It's time for you to leave. 
I mean, fuck you. I don't have to fucking leave. Who the fuck are you? I'm like, dude, you're over here. You've already fucking bumped into him. You pushed him. You're starting shit. I don't want my guys fighting. We're out here trying to have a good time. Just fucking leave. And I said, who are you here with? Because I was going to have one of his buddies say, you need to get this guy out of here. I ain't here with no fucking buddy but you, motherfucker. And I was like, oh, shit. So, and I'm off duty. I'm not a cop. I don't have to be what I call a decent guy. I could have just been an asshole because I wasn't on, I wasn't on duty. Kind of like my incident with the judge. The judge never exerted his government power or position to try to control the scene. He was just being a guy defending his wife. The cop was getting paid using his government position to push his authority, handcuff, assault people, and get in their face. See, and people want to, you know, because I hate the drunk and the loudmouth woman, and I don't like them, so I'm okay with whatever the cops do. They can do anything. See, that works really well until government gets so powerful that they learn they can do whatever they want to anybody. And next thing you know, they're doing to you. And then all of a sudden you scream, wait a minute. I didn't mind when you were acting unreasonable and asshole to other people, but I don't want you doing it to me. So that was the difference between those two. So anyway, I could have been an asshole and I just, I, just, I grabbed the dude and I go, dude, you're, you're leaving. I said, well, I'm done talking. So I grabbed him and I start pushing the door. No, before I, wait a minute, before I grabbed him, before I told him to leave, I said, dude, you just need to back away and leave us alone or something. And I turned away. And as I turned, I caught a sucker punch coming. And I dodged it just enough as his hand swung by. That's when I grabbed him. And I went, oh, hell no. And so I ended up grabbing him, physically throwing him out the door. And I mean, when I say throwing him, i kind of pushing him. He's kind of drunk. He's turning around trying to fight. I'm kind of pushing him. He's bouncing off tables and chairs. People are getting out of the way. I get him to the door. I push him out. I go, dude, don't come back in. It's not going to be good. Just go home. And I shut the door and I went back in and we started drinking. And my guys kind of gave me shit like, dude, he tried to sucker punch you. We thought you were going to whip his ass. Why didn't you? And I'm like, dude, the guy's drunk. What's the point of beating up a drunk dude? Can't... What's the point of going around pick? I mean, to me, angry cop with his size, muscle, and big tough guy image, to be picking on a 60, 70-year-old guy that's defending his wife and handcuffing him, getting in his face... It would be like me going to a third grade class and pushing around a bunch of third graders and getting them in a the corner and go, you want some of this? Yeah, I'm going to give you some credit and getting a little third grader's face. I mean, where's the honor or where is the, the, the greatness that you people are seeing in this behavior? I don't get it. But that was one incident to where I could have beat a guy's ass and I didn't. Just one of the many. I mean, that just came to mind. I remember that little fight that, that because my guys were kind of like, dude, man. He, he could have hit you, he tried to suck I would have fucking whipped it. I'm surprised you didn't, man. I can't believe you didn't. And whatever. So we, we moved on, forgot about it. Plus, in the back of my mind, had I whipped his ass, one of my troops, later when I got in their ass, would have probably stitched me out to the ball saying, hey, Sergeant Gore beat some guy up in a bar one night when we were outside. <laughs> so that was probably in the back of my head, but that didn't dictate. I, I like to dictate from a moral standpoint that, Look, I, I don't really want to be a dick. I can be a dick or I can be a nice guy. Normally it's up to you. If you're a dick to me, I can be a dick. Don't 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 think that my kindness is weakness. So here's the other crazy cop story. What's the other two? I had to write them down because I forget them. Oh yeah, throwing chairs. And I think I did this crazy cop story before. So I'm at the I'm at the DA's office and I'm the on-call investigator for the day. Normally they had one cop on call. Anybody that came in the front door, either being a dick, a parolee, parolee's family, mother, daughter, whatever, were pissed off because somebody was arrested or the cops were being mean and we want to complain to the DA and they'd have the DA, the on-call investigator of the day, go down and you'd have to take the plane, deal with any, any problems. That was your freaking job. It, it kind of sucked. You know, when you got fucking, you know, duty of the day or the on-call for the day, you were like, fuck, I can't go to lunch, I can't go eat donuts, I can't leave you to have coffee. You're kind of stuck in a building dealing with babysitting. So it wasn't the greatest duty. And I kind of had a reputation. Actually, I had a reputation on two ways, kind of like on YouTube. Some people hate me, some people love me. Some people think I'm really pro-cop, some people think I'm really anti-cop. Well, when I was a cop, some people thought I was a little heavy-handed and I'd go to fucking fisticuffs too quick. And other people thought I was too fucking easy and... I let people get away with shit 
when I should get down to business. So look, you're not going to please everybody. So I mean, I, so I kind of had a reputation that most people know if, if you fuck around, Rick will get down to business. So this guy's at the front counter raising hell about his kid or the DA's office taking his kid. And I can't remember if it was a child. Or I, I mean, maybe if you go back to the original video I did on this, I, I remember better on what the case was. But all I remember is this guy was a dad and his wife, it was something about a custody issue. And his wife either took his kid or refused. I think she left to go to, to another state or something. He had a job and he couldn't leave. And he was like, you guys help her. I got to pay child support. And now when I get my visitation, she takes kids, you can't do it. So he was pissed. You know what? To me, that's reasonable. He's got something to be upset about. He wants to see his kid. So I go down there. <laughs> so they call me. And as I get down there, there's already a few people because he's kind of yelling in the, in the break room. And so they kind of tell me before I got there, yo, man, this guy's upset. You want us to call some backup? You want us to call some uniforms? I was like, eh, let me talk to him, see what we got. So I go out there. He's like, who the fuck are you? I'm like, dude, I said, I'm here to kind of take your complaint. I go, what's going on? And, and I usually smile and laugh when I see people doing that because it's kind of like funny. Sometimes that pisses them off because they think I'm not taking them seriously when I'm kind of just laughing at the situation like, dude, you're up here yelling in my face and shit. I, I'm, try, I'm sitting here trying to help you and you're trying to escalate and goat me into a fight. And then when I arrest your ass, you're going to be crying because I know how this ends up. So that's what I'm thinking while I'm smiling. So he's all in my face and shit. And at one point, he literally... Our waiting room had about 15, 20 chairs or something in there for people to sit down while they're waiting because government is so efficient. We need 15 freaking chairs because we can't help people that come in. But I digress. So we have all these freaking chairs around here. And he literally starts throwing a couple chairs because he gets pissed. He grabs a chair, throws it against the wall, knocks a chair over, kicks a chair. I mean, he is freaking just going off. And as I'm dealing with him, I'm noticing because we have a glass here where there's usually a secretary that meets people. I'm noticing more and more heads pop out <laughs> to see what's going on because I see this little, because I'm aware of my environment. I got this guy here. I don't know what's going on. So my my awareness has gone up and I see this head popping in. <laughs> so I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, dude, what, what what exactly do you, you know, want from me? You want me to arrest you? I mean, I, and you go, you fucking think this is funny? If it was your kid and blah, and because I was kind of like smiling, trying to de-escalate it because I did not want to get into an angry cop, angry argument in your face. I'm in control. How dare you come in here and yell? I don't care what your problems are. You're going to respect my badge and my gun or I'll take your ass to jail. I didn't want to be that guy. So... I, I let him vent. He blew off some steam after he was freaking huffing and puffing and shit. And I was just kind of watching for a while. Finally, he was willing to talk. I was like, dude, I, how is this going to make anything better? How are you going to jail because you're destroying property? You're assaulting me. You're acting in an aggressive manner to me. You're, you're combative. I go, how is this going to help your child? You just told me I didn't care and I didn't understand. So I went into this logical thing and I made him think for a second. I didn't berate him. I didn't get in his face. I didn't tell him he was being a fucking idiot. I didn't tell him how dare you come in here and act like this in my presence because I'm special and I'm for the government and I'm here to help you. I mean, it, to me, that's the way cops should handle people. People get emotional. I don't like government in my business. I freaking hate government in my business. If a cop comes up to me today, I'm going to be freaking in there. I ask, like, get the fuck away from me. Arrest me or whatever. I don't want to deal with you. Leave me the fuck alone. A couple of cops just got shot in New Orleans. Funny ass video. I watched them this morning when I was doing comments. Whoever put those three links, I really appreciate it because that made it easy. Gave me three different links to kind of what was going on. So I watched the videos and uh, it's going to be a good video. <laughs> this one dude literally shits his pink panties. It is so freaking funny. I was laughing. I know some people are going to be offended. Cause they don't think it's funny because somebody just got a couple cops got shot but it's the situation that unfolds after that but anyway i digress back to this guy anyway i end up not arresting the guy i talked to him he ended up shaking my hand he apologized for doing that he goes man i'm sorry and he, he got he got reasonable after he got some of his emotion out he was a really reasonable loving dad and i was able i think to help him i don't remember how it ended up but he was pretty happy with me and then when I went in, of course, all the other DAs, my supervisor would end up coming down. He was in a window. And he was like, 
Man, I almost ran out there when he started throwing shit, but it looked like you had it under control, so I just figured I'd let you go. I think he was waiting for me to jump on him so he could go. Man, I knew you were too aggressive because me and him had a rocky start. He was my supervisor, and at first we didn't like each other before he wasn't my supervisor. Then he, when he became my supervisor, he had this preconceived idea that Rick was a hot dog Rambo out there just fucking doing shit, and he was gonna, he was gonna reel me in. He was gonna pull the reins back on me. So he kind of had that attitude, and if you come at me like that, I'm going to have the attitude, who the fuck are you? You don't know me. So we kind of had a rocky start, and at the end, we became pretty good friends. I really liked him. He backed me up on a couple incidents where the agency was kind of trying to say, you know, you shouldn't have done that. And he was like, bullshit. He was right. So, you know, it started off, though, kind of a little, he thought, you know, I was a little too aggressive. And then once he got to know me and saw me, he was like, man, he's pretty fair. And when he gets aggressive, it's usually justified. So anyway, that was one incident. What was the other incident? Damn, this video's going on. I hope my battery don't die. The horse is almost out of hay. <laughs> horse is like, Dad, go get us some more hay. You keep talking. Oh, Dad, a cat attacked the cops. So in this incident, a guy, much like this angry cop video, this guy came in and tried to rescue his daughter who we arrested, and I think she was a cranker for sale. She had crank. She was a pro lease. She went and assaulted a gun. So I don't remember. I mean, they all freaking run together. But she did some pretty serious shit because we had four or five people when we either kicked the door or forced entry to go in and arrest her because dad was at the door, and I don't want you taking my daughter, and she's got a drug problem, and I'm trying to help her. And the same, you know, if you ask a parent, their kid's always great, and it's always someone else's fault. So. We didn't want to hear it. Anyway, she did something. We got in the house, and we ended up fighting with her. And so there was two or three cops on her. So I was kind of hanging back. I didn't need to get in there. And then all of a sudden, here comes fucking dad. Boom, over me, and he starts grabbing cops. Get off my daughter! So I end up grabbing him, kind of hip-hugging him, running him back into the wall and go, Dude, you cannot be doing this. That's my fucking daughter! Why the fuck you motherfuckers can't be here? And of course she's fighting and kicking and they're freaking screaming, get her legs. And so there's a fight over here and I'm dealing with him and he assaulted the cops. He assaulted me trying to get back to me, tried to knock me out. So, I mean, could I have arrested him? Of course I could have. Could I got in his face and handcuffed him and been a tough guy? You don't ever talk to, let me talk to you. Let me show you how tough I am. I, I didn't fucking do all that bullshit. I got in the corner, I got him to calm down, stop fighting, and go, dude, I get it. It's your daughter. But she violated the law. She committed some serious crimes. She's got to go to jail and she's fighting with the cops. I get it, it's hard. But you going to jail with her ain't going to solve a damn thing and you can't help her. Because you're probably going to go bail her ass out as soon as we leave anyway. And you can't do that if you're in jail. And he was just like, man, you just don't understand how much I've dealt with her. And he kind of went into this, let me justify why I did it, which I didn't really care. I mean, I wasn't going to arrest the guy. A couple other cops were like, man, he fucking assaulted me. You should have took his ass in. I was like, dude, he's a dad. He's offending his daughter. Don't you freaking have any common sense whatsoever? I mean, what, what do you want him to do? Yeah, take that bitch to jail. Yeah, kick her ass. I mean, what, what do you freaking expect a guy to do? The dad loves his daughter and he's reacting to a bunch of men beating her up. I mean, well, I, I just don't get the mindset of people anymore. But anyway, I figured I'd share those two crazy cop stories. My boys are almost finished their hay. Why do you make her tell you're good boys? Buddy's back there trying to show me up. I don't know if you guys can see. He's always got to show me up on camera. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so that's my crazy cop stories. That's why I believe what I believe. And again, I think this goes back to in the military. You know, I joined the military when I was 17. I was a kid. So the people that kind of shaped me were the men of the 70s. And I had some asshole drill sergeants. I told you I lived with one of my DIs. He was whatever, a drunk with drink. And he was a different guy out of his hat screaming in our face in a drill sergeant mode. He he wouldn't have been drill sergeant mode when we were living together because we'd have been brawling in the freaking street. I guarantee you he wouldn't have done that when we were living together. But in his role of drill sergeant, I get it. He was being a tough guy asshole. So uh, there's a time and a place. Everybody has their own moral compass. Mine, <laughs> my rabbit's still jumping around back there. <laughs> I didn't want him to go in the garage, so I shut the door, luckily. I had to check that. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, look, people, I, I just wish more people would look at government as the enemy. And I'm not saying you got to go kill everybody in government. I'm saying they are the enemy of freedom. They are the enemy of allowing people to run their own lives. They want control and power. They want to be able to justify their job, their position, their benefits, their self-worth, their uh, mandatory uh, neediness that you must need them because you're an incompetent fool and you're not smart enough to run your own life and you need the guidance of these wonderful elected officials and appointed people by the elected officials and the hiring of people because of their sex, color, gender, whatever reason they hire them for other than standards. And you must want government who is incompetent because we hire incompetent people and it takes 20 people to do a job that one person would do in a really competent organization. But that is the big issue. Government is not your friend. I know people want to tell you that firemen are your friend and the police are your friend and politicians are your friend and when government gives you free money, they're your friend. Government doesn't give you anything they don't take from someone else. Government does not have anything and they do not produce anything. They merely take from others and then claim to be smarter and better with your money. So uh, government power is the root of all evil. I I'm sorry if that offends somebody. I'm sorry if you work for government or your daughter works for government or someone you know works for government and you think because you love them that somehow because they work for government, government is good. It's a lie. Government is not good. Government is not a person. It becomes a bureaucracy. It becomes a cult. It becomes this massive organization that justifies its abuses, its seizure of power, its stopping of freedoms, its control over people so they can't have freedom to run their own lives. That's the problem with government. And the biggest strong arm of government is the police. And as a cop, I'm telling you, cops have too much power. I had too much power. It was very easy for me to abuse it if I wanted to. It's very easy for cops to abuse their power. Now, not only abuse their power, they can literally kill people without justification. It will be ruled justified. So look at government with a questionable eye at best because they are not your friend. And normally, when you think they're coming to help, you will soon realize the situation has only gotten worse. All right. That's my big message here. A couple crazy cop stories. Hope you enjoyed watching the boys. It's a peaceful morning out here. Texas morning. Sun's coming up. I didn't get the sunrise over here. Where's that sunrise at? Shit, is the camera even picking it up? Anyway, sun's over there somewhere if you didn't see it. <laughs> where's that damn crazy rabbit? He's over there eating his little food. Uh, and I don't know where Moki's at. But anyway, he was in, the mo he was in here this morning. Well, in out there, hopefully y'all have a good day. Remember, government is not your friend. Don't be convinced otherwise. Well, in that there, buddy, Mr. T, you're good boys.